Hey guys, Les here and welcome back to my 2012 Ford Beginner Series and in this episode we're going to go through the general interface so you guys have an overview of what basically all this stuff means and does so you guys won't feel as lost as you were before. So the first thing we're going to go, we're going to do is turn most of this off so um, it's easier for me to go through everything and that way it's not going to be as confusing so if you're just going to display heads up display or UI elements and while I'm here I'm also going to show you another thing within the interface how you can customize things and that's by if you go on any of these tabs as you can tell there's this little dotted line which means you can tear these panels off so if I'm going to display and I want this whole panel to be a separate window on my display and I can just click on this third line and as you can tell it turns into a separate window now this way it will always stay here and I don't have to keep going back to display UI elements and do it from here so what we're going to do is we're going to turn all these things off and go through them one by one so as you can tell I'll also turn off if you are going to display heads up display and I'll turn off poly count now you've got a nice clean window and this way we can also customize our window for the uh, next episodes so what we're going to start off by is the status line so if you take that on as you can clearly tell that's going to be this window right here and this is where you get all your general um, sort of tools that you can um, use quite often or not very often it depends on what you work with but the first thing I'm going to go through is this very top line which is obviously your settings and the first five or up to the assets um, option they all this first six will always stay the same the rest of them change depending on what mode you're in so as you can tell in this status line there is this little window here and if you click on that you get different customizable customized um, options so if you work with animation and click on that as you can tell these top options will change depending on what setting you're in so if I go on polygons as you can tell I get my edit mesh and modeling tools if I go into animation I get all my animation settings and so on and so forth so depending on what you're doing you can change this and you get the settings compared to that so in file you got your general new scene open scene and all your save and export and import if you guys done the photoshop series before then you guys should know what most of this means but we'll go into more detail in edit you got your duplicate and all that but we'll go into these options um, further later on so let's go back to the status line we get this little panel here where you can change what you're working with and then we'll go into these little tools later on as we are going through the tutorial and as we start using them that's the best way to learn them these are your general snap to grid tools um, just basic rendering and this is your um, transformation grid <coughs> and all that stuff so let's just move on to the next bit which is the shelf and this is where you get your um, this is kind of your most used tools but everything that you can find in here you can also find in the top um, settings so top tools so everything that you can um, find in the shelf is also up here somewhere but this is basically um, that you use the most and then also again you can change between your general and polygon modeling tools or surfaces which is your NURBS tools animation dynamics and so on you can also customize the shelf once you know what you're doing know what tools you're using the most you can start customizing this and put up all your shortcuts up here so that's the shelf it's very useful I use it very often but for the tutorial sakes I'll leave everything at uh, custom or I'll leave it where we set it up together and we'll use that so you guys don't get lost of what um, 
windows do I have or what you don't have you're not gonna have that problem so next thing we're gonna go on to is the time slider which is on the bottom and basically this is for animation so each second is built out of 24 frames so basically this 24 frames would be one second in an animation and you get your play and pause and skip ahead and all that tools on the bottom here next is the range slider and basically with this what you can do is increase or decrease the frames you have so I can set it on here I can turn it so let's say there are 48 frames at the moment in my scenes and I wanna only work on the first four frames I can just click on this square and pull it to four frames and now when I move it ahead it moves ahead in four frames or I can move it ahead in every 24 frames and so on if I want my animation to be I don't know 160 frames then I can type it in here and now I have 160 frames to work with so I increased the animation time that I have the next thing is the command line where you type all your mail scripts and all that stuff in here so basically this is more of your um, scripting and kind of mail programming you do it in here and we'll go through some basic scripting we probably will go through some more advanced scripting as well later on in the series but at the moment we're not going to worry about this too much next thing we have we have the helpline and as you can tell this little bit here just displays short help tips for tools and selections so it even tells you what it is so if I just go up I don't know about here the cone tool then it tells you on the bottom right there what it does so there's a polygon cone tool and then if I click on that there's a polygon torus tool and all that stuff so if I scroll onto this what's what's this there's the x-ray view if I wondering about what this is then it tells me wireframe and it also tells me right next to my cursor so it doesn't just tell me on the bottom here what it is it also tells me right next to the tool if I leave it hovering around there very handy next thing is the toolbox and obviously you're gonna get a very familiar familiar with these tools because we're going to use these very often so if I just go through these because we'll use these very often the top one is your selection tool and so on lasso tool again select objects by encircling them in a lasso so it tells you even on the bottom what these mean and then you get your paint selection tool you get your move tool rotate scale this is your um, universal um, manipulator it's a quite fussy word for it but yeah I don't really use that often you get your soft modification tools and these are your different um, views that you can um, have so if I click on this one this is my one view if I click on the second one this is when we got all the four different views this is the outliner which is very very useful and we'll go through these in more detail later on so what's the next thing we got the attrib attribute editor and this is where if you if I just create uh, a sphere so if you see what's going on this is where basically you get all the attributes for your object so I can go into um, I can go into the channel box and I can select my sphere and I can increase the subdivisions in it so it's more detailed I can increase it this way I can increase the radius of it and all that stuff and you'll get familiar with this channel box and the layer box which is down here later on we'll have a whole episode dedicated to these and once we start using them you'll get very familiar with what all this does so the next thing is the tool settings you can get it up by double clicking on a tool that you want to customize as well and you get all your different settings for your um, tools down here how you can customize them and so on you're not really going to use that so at the moment so I'm going to close that and that's all for our UI elements 
Now another thing I wanted to go through, which will be very helpful later on, is the heads up display. So even from the heads up display the most important one is the poly count. So if I click on that then we get how many faces and how many edges and all that sort in our current scene or how many you can see at the moment and we'll go through this more detail as well as time goes on. So this was the quick, very quick overview of the interface. So now if you guys look at um, Maya again, hopefully it's not going to be as confusing as it was before because now you got a general overview of what all this stuff is. One thing um, before we move on to the next episode, what we're going to customize it is we're going to set this up for the next um, couple of episodes that we're going to be doing. So if we just go back into display, UI elements and tear that window off, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn off some of the um, things that we're not going to be using in the next couple of episodes. So we've got more room to work with. First thing we're going to do is turn off the poly count, so just like that, go into display, UI um, heads up display, turn off the poly count, and then in the window we're going to turn off a couple of things off, not too many, we're going to turn off the time slider because we're not going to be doing any animation, we're going to turn off the range slider as well, we're going to turn off the command line because we're not going to be doing any scripting at the moment and we're gonna keep everything else I think um, we need the channel box very important attribute editor we're gonna keep that as well and we'll keep the helpline as well so if you just turn off the um, tool settings command line range slider and time slider then this should be a good enough sort of um, UI layout that we're going to be using for the next couple of episodes and once we move on to the animation bit and all that bit we'll slowly turn them back off so thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in the next episode